Okay, today I want to talk about uh, taking a daytime photograph and changing it into a night scene and make a, a, a night painting out of it. And the photograph here is um, in southern Utah. It's about midday, and I want to turn that into a night scene. Uh, before Photoshop and the other apps that we now have, even on our iPhone, I can change this into a night scene. But before that, I would just do small little three by five, six by eight uh, color and value studies just to figure out how to change things from daytime to nighttime. So here's the Photoshop version of that. And you can do this on your phone or Photoshop. And again, if you don't have either one of those, you can just do a, a small value painting just to change the values or even a thumbnail drawing, just to change the big four or five main values in the photograph, darken them and make them more of a night scene. So what I did in Photoshop, and it'd be the same thing I do on the iPhone, is just turn the brightness back all the way and then desaturate, not all the way, I don't want to uh, lose all the color, but a lot of it. You can see here I desaturated, there's still kind of yellow green grass and color on the ground and the tree and the hills and everything, but I want to reduce that quite a bit. Now in Photoshop, I can paint the sky. The sky wasn't this dark. So just painting that and making it darker. I did mess with the tree, but that had nothing to do with turning it into a night scene. I just kind of moved it slightly and simplified the shape. But I'm going to use this to paint from. And again, here's the daytime scene. And you can see it's just a matter of reducing the intensity of the sunlight, because what we're painting here is not sunlight, but moonlight. And the moonlight is cooler, so I'm going to use either kind of a violet or a blue-green idea of light, whereas in the daytime I'm using more yellow, yellow, orange, orange to affect the idea of sunlight on everything. There's yellow, green, yellow, green with a little orange in the trees, uh, the yellow, orange, muted yellow, orange dirt, Everything has a warmth to it, so I'm using warmer colors. In the night scene, I'm going to reverse that. My light areas, instead of being sunlight now, are moonlight, which is, again, blue-green, blue-violet, and I want to affect those. That doesn't mean I can't have a yellow-green grass at night. I can. It just has to be affected with blue-green or violet to give the effect of what the moon is doing to the objects. And then the shadows <clears throat> go black, pretty much. They're really low, low value. They're, you know, on a one to nine scale, they're probably seven, eight, nine in that range in there. Because nighttime, you don't see into the shadows at all. Daytime, well, sometimes in daytime, you don't see in the shadows on a photograph because the photograph doesn't pick up any light in these deep darks of the barn. So I would want to add a little bit of reflected light in there, but this one doesn't have any big shadows that get lighter because of the uh, sunlight bouncing around. But even in these deep shadows, if I was painting this uh, day scene, I'd want to get a little reflected light in there to show that the shadow is transparent and I can see into it. But at night, we don't have that. The shadows can be real dark. Now I don't want the darks in the tree, just as dark as the deep darks of the barn, but they're pretty close. So darks are more simple, they're darker, there's no reflected light in there to speak of, and then the light areas are cooler. So here is starting the drawing, and when I paint a night scene, I tone the board with burnt sienna. Um, I will add liquid to it so that it's drier, or dry in a couple of hours, sometimes overnight. But even paint there in burnt sienna would dry overnight or in a, in a few hours even. But with liquid, it dries a little bit more solid. Uh, it stays better. So when I put kind of a wet paint on top of it, it won't come up again. Or you can use acrylic. You can tone it with acrylic. <clears throat> you don't want to paint oil on top of acrylic, but as long as the acrylic is real thin, like toning it with just the burnt sienna, then it's okay. But I want that tone of the burnt sienna to be more of a middle value. I don't want it light or too dark. Um, I don't want the overall tone to be as dark as the shadow, but I want it dark enough 
that I can judge the values better so that the moonlight areas really jump off against this darker kind of half tone of the canvas. Plus the cool moonlight will stand out better against the real warm tone of the canvas. So I would recommend the burnt sienna. And then as I'm drawing, I'm drawing with uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue to get it dark enough. Placing this dark shape in here, this is dark, this is kind of my focal point. Um, so placing that dark first so that the house isn't dead center. It's hanging over on this side a bit more. And then from there, however else or whatever else fits in, fits in. I've got what interests me, this area right in here. It's kind of my main area that I'm interested in. So then as I continue to draw, darks over here, the mountains in the background and the barn over there, whatever fits in, fits in. If this runs off or if this doesn't show as much, that's all right because I'm interested in this. And that's what I'm gonna make sure stays in the painting. Not worried about squeezing everything in in the photograph. Photograph has a lot more of this barn and a lot more of this stuff. I made this bigger, the tree in the barn, so I'm gonna lose some of this stuff on either side, and that doesn't matter. That's actually a good thing. It makes my focal point a lot bigger. Now I do, you know, I don't wanna do much detail, but I go ahead and finish the drawing, the boards leaning against the barn here, these fence posts, just to see how they're gonna be placed, how they're gonna look. I don't mind painting over them. If I put them in once, I can do it again. I don't have to paint around these small things, but this sets up the whole drawing. Then this is my palette. It's a very limited palette at nighttime because you don't have as much color. There's no sense squeezing out a lot of cad yellow, you know, a lot of cadmium red mediums, deeps and violets. Although I will use those colors in a night scene, but not yet. I want to get everything blocked in with these three colors. And since I'm going with the idea of moonlight being more of a, a bluish green, I'm using phthalo blue here. Phthalo blue and then burnt sienna and then yellow ochre. And I still have a primary palette, primary colors. I got blue, red, yellow. It's just not the pure colors. The blue is, but the red and yellow are more earth colors. They're not primary, they're not real strong. So this is gonna give me a very muted painting, whether I want it or not. So this keeps my colors muted and the, I'm gonna have a little bit of phthalo blue in everything that has moonlight in it. So all the moonlit areas are gonna have a touch of phthalo blue. Even if it's a you know red barn, it's gonna have a little phthalo blue in it because it's affected by the moonlight. Shadows will be just the burnt sienna and blue I don't know that I would add any ochre into the shadows or not because they're so deep and dark. But that's my palette. Then at the end, when everything is blocked in, I might come back and add a little violet accent somewhere or a touch of orange or a alizarin crimson or even viridian. And what those are then are more accent colors or modifiers maybe. I'm just adding them to an area or two that I want to stand out a bit more. Because if I put some viridian in somewhere in the painting, it's gonna really jump out because it's not one of these three colors. These three colors create everything in the painting. So anytime you introduce something that's not in the, in the uh, limited palette, it's gonna stand out. So I'd wanna put that where I want to draw more attention. And I can mute these other colors, the violet, the viridian, the orange, and then put them in. They'll still stand out, but just not as much. But these are the three colors that I'll sp spend three quarters of the painting on, if not more. And then the last few minutes add a spot of color or two. Coming back to my uh, drawing here, I'm blocking in the shadow first. So, ult uh, not ultramarine, phthalo blue, a little bit of um, burnt sienna, and I'm knocking those in pretty dark. And you can see this is pretty blue. I don't have much burnt sienna in there. So you can control the intensity. It doesn't have to be half and half to where it gets real dull. It can be a bit more on the uh, burnt sienna side or it could be a bit more on the blue side. Typically shadows at night are gonna be a bit warmer. Not that they look real warm. It's just that compared to the moonlit areas, 
they look a bit warmer. It's not like on a sunny day where the shadows can look real cold because the sunlit areas are so warm. The intensity of temperature is a little closer, but I tend to want the shadows to have a bit more warmth in them. And I got the background mountains filled in. Some variations of just, again, the blue and the burnt sienna, a little more white because they're not as dark as the, as the shadows. And here's my palette again. You can see how I'm mixing. I'm mixing over in here. And I always pick one color that's gonna dominate, like if it's the yellow grass, so I might pick yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt sienna to darken it maybe, and then a little bit of phthalo green to mute it slightly. Or just a little bit of yellow ochre, phthalo green to have a brighter yellow green, and then a little bit of burnt sienna to mute. And I'm mixing over here, but Eventually, I just start blending, mixing into these bigger piles. It's nice to have the uh, value changes, the darker to lighter, kind of lined up there. It just helps you move along a little bit quicker. You can think about value a little bit easier that way. And here the sun, uh, moonlit trees are more of the phthalo blue with a little bit of ochre. The burnt sienna would be used in here to mute it slightly. So whatever two colors I put together, the only color that's left will be used to gray that color. Same thing here, this is probably blue and burnt sienna. A Little bit of ochre will mute it, although I don't have to mute blue and burnt sienna, they're pretty muted already. Burnt sienna and blue are not pure, or uh, yellow ochre are not pure colors, so they're a little more muted. So you can see how warm the foreground is, because I haven't put the moonlit ground in there yet. And here, the, how cool it, it becomes. This is uh, blue with a little bit of burnt sienna, or burnt sienna with a little bit of blue. And here's blue with a little bit of yellow ochre. So that cool blue really comes out here. You can see how much cooler that looks than that. That burnt sienna is real warm. And then doing the roof here. Let's get the value of the roof. I wanna get uh, the values of the big shapes, the big planes in there. Try not to break them up into small little shapes too soon, which is detail, the small little shapes. I want to stay bigger shapes so I can work on the overall value of the big masses before I start to break them up. I've got several different values here, and it's all some kind of ochre and phthalo blue. So a little bit of broken up there, a little bit of value change into smaller shapes. But I want to get everything covered before I start picking at it too much. Now I'm doing the white. Of course, white on a sunny day where the sunlight hits the white side of a barn, it would be white and a little ochre, white and a little orange, maybe white and a little cad yellow. But that'd be real warm. Here's the opposite. It's gonna be white with a little bit of phthalo blue. And I can have a little bit of phthalo blue with a touch of burnt sienna in it or just more straight blue. But it's still 90, 95, 98% white. It's really light. I just want to affect the temperature of that white and I want to turn it bluer. Same thing with the door. You can see how much darker the door is in the white part of the barn. And that's what matters. How dark it is and then how cool do I want to make it. So it's again, phthalo blue and burnt sienna. And now the sky, this is more of a <clears throat> phthalo blue with a little bit of burnt sienna in it. I'm gonna keep the sky a little brighter. Depending on what the, where the moon is um, and what it's doing, the value of the sky can change all night, just like during the daytime, depending on where the sun is, the value of the sky changes. And this is not a cloudy night, so it's gonna be a clear sky, so it's gonna be a bit, a bit bluer. And getting the foreground, burnt sand with a little blue, get that filled in. I can let some of the warmth of the initial burnt sienna tone show through. I don't want a lot of it, but a little bit of it in here showing through helps break it up. As long as it still reads a little bit of that cooler red overall, I can have a bit of that real warm burnt sienna come through. But you can see it's almost like doing a black and white painting because I don't have a lot of choices. My choices is, are, you know, how dark or light is it gonna be? And is it a little bit more on the bluish side or a bit more on the burnt sienna side? So it's similar to almost a monochromatic or, or a, uh, of just a value painting. I'm starting to break up the tree here, a bit more of just straight blue, just to cool it off. 
a bit more from this stage, adding a few variations on the roof, a little bit stronger blue, and just slowly starting to break it up, adding some of the patches of dirt that are in the hills back in here. And then the last stage. Now I haven't added any other colors. Well, I take that back. That does look like violet right there. So I added a little bit of deoxazine purple there. And I see some in there and some viridian there. Okay. I did this a while back and I couldn't remember what else I did at the finish. So I added some of the other colors on my palette. You can see some of the viridian, the violet, a little bit of the orange. But it's a, a tiny bit because I don't want to lose that color harmony that I get from sticking with the three colors I stayed with. And the three colors, you know, the red, burnt sienna, the yellow, yellow ochre, and the blue, ultramarine blue, they're primaries, but it's also a triadic color scheme, red, yellow, blue. It's the safest triadic color scheme. You can mix everything with it. The only difference is when the red is burnt sienna and the yellow is yellow ochre, um, everything's going to look muted, which is what I want on this night scene here. So. Here's the um, daytime photograph and then the night painting. And it, night painting doesn't mean everything goes black, again, depending on what time of night and uh, what the moon is doing. I'm always painting, if I, when I actually do paint outside, it's always a full moon because you get more contrast. Where there's no moon or a, a, a smaller setting of the moon, it's, it's a lot darker. It's hard to see into the night, so. And I always push it a bit more, make it a bit lighter than what it is. It's still gonna read as nighttime, but it just won't be as, as dark. But the key here again is to focus on the values, create that shadow pattern that flows throughout the whole, whole painting and keep your colors limited so that uh, you can focus more on the, on the values. And you can watch uh, this next video on split complementary colors which is also another color scheme uh, to go along with this idea of, of a color scheme. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like the video.